Hello, good evening and welcome to this edition of the program. Thank you very much for your time. Now, um, the, big, the big matters are over, aren't they? Uh, except that we are still uh, monitoring the uh, Ganaba Association and the way they respond to some of the matters that have come up um, yesterday and today. Uh, but, but that's for monitoring. Tonight we are talking economics and we are talking how we will, should be able to move our country forward in a better economic paradigm and, um, and, and what leadership must do and can do. We are picking the brain of uh, some people uh, beginning from today. Uh, remember we had Dr. Yao Graham the other day, we were talking about the mining industry and the mining sector. And he was very passionate about how Ghana can um, create an economic renaissance by just having a better look at the mining sector here in Ghana. Tonight we are hosting um, Dr. Kofi Amoa and uh, he is going to tell us. Uh, he, he, he's been thinking through this process and he has developed a triangle of how he thinks that Ghana can move forward. He's going to share that triangle um, with us um, uh, tonight. And um, just as we invited him into the studio, I was having a discussion with him uh, earlier today by the email. And um, I, I said to him that, well, I mean, many, there are 24 million Ghanaians, all of us have opinions about, about how to move Ghana forward. So uh, tell me why we should be listening to you at all and why your opinion uh, um, is, is one of those that we must listen to. And he sent me an interesting response on the email, which I'd like to share with you even before I introduce him. Uh, he said, and I, I, I don't know whether we can put it on the television for others to see, but he said that um, um, if you need uh, justification for why I, I can speak on the topic and offer reasonable suggestions, here are a few. And you can see on the screen, he says that I am the son of a cocoa farmer who was also a licensed cocoa buyer for the CMB. I observed firsthand as a young boy the focus and handwork which cocoa families apply to their work. It was a credible path from poverty to riches, and my father scaled it, being able to pay for the education of his children. Uh, let's go on. Being able to pay for the education of his children. He says, I also observed firsthand government extension officers coming to my father's farm with agronomic advice on planting, quality control, etc., which helped tremendously um, to boost the yield. I am a trained development economics from the University of California and wrote my thesis on agricultural research and services. I am an entrepreneur and a businessman who has started and grown several businesses in Africa and the United States. It goes on, he says, I have traveled widely around the world observing how other societies tackle their development issues. I have studied the U.S. economy and society deeply having schooled and lived there for over 30 years. I have recently traveled, traveled through China, observing and having discussions with their political and business people. And um, I have advised a couple of African presidents and seen at close range the difficult choices at hand. I am a Christian patriot and have deep passion for the progress of the nation and her people. So. That's the, uh, that's the reason uh, that Dr. Kofi Amwa sent to me. Good evening, sir. Good evening that's quite elaborate, well thought out. I, I was, I was uh, very impressed when I read that email from you, uh, especially your conclusion that you are a Christian patriot and you have deep passion for the progress of the nation and her people. What does that mean, Christian patriot? No, it's a passionate patriot. Mm, okay. Because, yes. Mm -hmm. But I'm a patriot mm -hmm. you know, in the sense of having concern for my nation, uh, and observing, as you read to the people, how other people have been able to jump from poverty to affluence in a few decades. Uh, countries that had similar historical experiences and background like us. Countries that have been colonized, countries that are agrarian, and now some of these countries are one of the largest economies in the world, speaking about China. And therefore, when I say that, I have thought deeply about the nation's difficulties. I spent hours thinking through things. How can we have such fertile lands, north and south, east and west, and yet we are depending on other people's agricultural produce? How come we have such young, able-bodied youth you see them in the streets. Four, five o'clock in the morning, they are there, ready to sell somebody's product. 
That means they are not lazy. They are looking for something to do. And yet, we don't look at them as a resource. And therefore, I come to your studio to try to begin a dialogue in this country. I think when you look at other people's history, you will see that there was a time that there was a violent discussion of which direction should we go. You study the American Revolution, the French Revolution, you study the Chinese-Japanese uh, War, you study the Second World War, you study how Britain controlled the world, you study the Germans, how they copied from the Britain, you study all these things and you look at Ghana and say, God, what is wrong with us? And therefore I think that if we think that we are going to build a society that spreads economic development across the length and breadth of our, of our nation, we must begin to be practical and pragmatic. Let me give you examples. Mm. But before then, you think we must have a conversation in this country. Yes. Uh, you talked about America, you're referring to the Hamilton and the Federalist Papers and the arguments they had mm -hmm. about which way to go. You, you think we should do that today? You know? well, I think we, we've, we've, we've had a parliament that's been working for a while. But, but yeah. I have to take a break. Before then, let me just um, inform the viewers who have just joined us that we are beginning a conversation about our economic development paradigms. And tonight, Dr. Kofi Amoy is sharing his views with us. Um, you can reach us on goodeveninggana.gmail.com and we will uh, be delighted to read your email. Um, when we come back from the break, I'd like you to tell us, first of all, why we have not been able to do it in a line or two or three. Uh, and then we will go to what we have to do. Uh, and I see your triangle, uh, which I, I hope I can put up for people to see as well. You have a triangle that has um, the manufacturing at the apex, uh, agriculture at the apex, I should say, manufacturing and finance. And then he wants to discuss uh, within that context, agriculture, manufacturing and finance. After the break, we'll continue the conversation with Dr. Moore. Welcome back. Thank you very much for your time. Tonight we are talking uh, to Dr. Moore about um, economics and about um, the development of the nation. Now we want to do this now that uh, the court is over and um, of course President Mahama will be in office uh, until the next election in 2016. Um, the, it's time to discuss how we move our nation forward and to assist those who have been elected into power perhaps if they would listen uh, to share some ideas with them on how we think that it can be done. That's the purpose of our platform on television, on radio and in newspapers and we want to apply that pl platform to that purpose. Here's a triangle that Dr. Moore has designed as uh, his own way of, uh, of getting the thing done. If you can see the triangle and then, uh, uh, okay, it's not yet ready. But I promise to ask you, why haven't we been able to do the things that we, we should be doing 50, over 50 years in, at independence? Well, you're asking me a leadership question. You know, a nation is run by leaders. And the focus that leadership places on important issues will drive the conversation within the society. And, and, and you are talking about the, the debate in America uh, in, in, in formulating the right structures for a society. Uh, the, the leaders at the time saw that they had to do that. Now, we, we struggled for independence. We got it. And what did we do? We quickly turned around and implemented the institutions mimicking our colonial masters. My mother in the village was asked to vote on a huge document called a constitution. What a fuss. You know, so what I'm saying is this. Is there some umbilical cord between, say, our parliament and the people in the hinterland? Do they really understand that some people have been elected to sit there and think through ways to run things properly? And what is their accountability? When they come to them to ask for their vote, how do they evaluate what, what, what is it that they should base their decisions on? But if you don't mind, mm -hmm. Mr. Adamotri, I really want to dwell on economic development based on the resources of the nation, our human capital and our land resources. Okay, let's hear you. Yes. I'm saying that if you look at the history of many nations whose circumstances were similar to ours today, they have scaled it. Now... They have plenty of jobs for their people. They are exporting all kinds of products around the world. They have become rich. There are some nations who have forty-five, fifty thousand dollars per capita income. And we are down there, one thousand, one thousand four hundred. Why is that?
common sense tells me that. Why don't you take a look at what did they do? These countries were also colonized, who were just as poor as we were. What did they do? Peel the onion and look behind it. I mean, we've, haven't and, you and been talking about this for too long? We have, but, the, but, the, but, but we, don't, we don't implement it. You see, my point is that mm. if we just become a nation of talkers, hmm, uh, uh, freedom has been uh, plentiful now. Radio stations all over the place. So uh, we get up every morning, talk, 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 but there's no doing. Look at you and me. Everything we are wearing here, and my brother's here, is made in somebody else's country. Do you understand? We are importing vegetables. We are importing fruit juice. We are importing rice. We are importing things that we should be able to make on our own land by our own people. What you sleep on, the clothes you wear. And you cannot be a nation that is just a consumption nation. You must be a nation of producers. And my point is that in the initial stages of this country's development, they started with what is doable. Are we not producing human capital? Are we not producing Ambassador Kofi Annan? Are we not producing people like you uh, who, have, who have done business that have affected the whole of Africa? Are we not producing other human resources? Is that not part of the production? Is it that we are not looking in that area to be able to capitalize it into wealth? Are we, are we looking away from that? Well, if you, we are, you if about we are, not producing if we, are, if we are producing those things and it has not percolated to make a big impact and transform the lives of the people, then maybe we are going in the wrong direction. I'm saying that majority of Ghanaians are agrarian. They live their lives on the farm. Mm -hmm. Hundreds of thousands of them. Mm -hmm. Now we become urban biased. Most of our nation's resources are spent in the cities and in the big towns. And we've left these people there. But if you look at the initial stages, cocoa became a big source of revenue for our people. Now, let's look at that. How did that happen? Why were we successful in cocoa? Small-scale cocoa plantations. Man, wife, and children go and till the land. Supported by an intelligent public policy. Give them loans. Help them with the seeds. Help them with the knowledge that is necessary. Give them the jute bags. See how, as soon as they finish, you buy the produce from them. They don't have to get into market and try to find a buyer in the UK. or And it worked. Still it's, working. It's still working. Why can't we duplicate that? In which other products? It can be oil palm. It can be maize. It can be rice. It can be any item that we can consume and sell the, 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 the balance to other people. The point I'm making is that if you look at Japanese economy, the Chinese economy, the Taiwan economy, the Korean economy, it is so clear of the processes that they took to get to where they are today. Now, we have the same situations. We have abandoned land. As I told you, we have all these young people looking for something to do. I am calling for a national policy that says that first, we want to maximize agricultural products by instituting small-scale family farms and picking crops that we know can grow in different parts of Ghana. You go to the Ministry of Agriculture, they will show you the soil use map of Ghana. We have mapped up the whole country. We know where tomatoes can grow. We know how, where oil palm can grow. We have all But that's too subsistence for the global competitive world. You're not talking about machinery. You're talking about family farms. That's a cake. You have to have a step function. You don't start doing everything all at once. But you can, see, you can buy combined harvesters. Paul, you are ahead of yourself. The point I'm making is this. Let's get the maximum output from the resources we have as is. You're talking about education and all of that. The 24 million people that we have now, let's take a snapshot picture. What do we have now? What are the skill sets? The land that we have now, what is the situation? What can the land be used for? The item that I'm talking about, are we consuming them ourselves? Who else can we sell them to? And therefore, if you have that program that maximizes the output using these inputs, that's stage one. Stage two is processing these crops, for instance. Tomato, canning the tomatoes, for instance. Fruit juice. So stage one is to produce it. To produce it. To consume and to well, sell. To consume and also the surplus to sell, to export. In the raw states as a state. You, you can, yes. Yeah. So, so you're saying that 
Uh, instead of importing $700 million of worth of rice, which we are doing now mm -hmm. every year, uh, if we produce that rice here, it mean, what it means is that we are consuming $700 million worth of rice. So the point you are making is that if that $700 million do worth of rice is the business that is being done here in Ghana, mm -hmm. then we'll be richer, I, I, if I get you correct. That's of course, if you have $700 million, mm -hmm. why give it to another country? Why don't you employ your own Can we people? grow the rice here? Why not? We you can. can buy the knowledge. Mm -hmm. This is what happened. The, Who the, is going to grow it? You say the families, the people, in, the, in the, everybody. Who is going to grow it? Listen, mm -hmm. I am trying to create opportunity for Ghanaian people, citizens. Yeah, I understand that. Yeah. Okay? Now, what do they know how to do? We have mass unemployment. They can plant. They can plant. Okay? As low level as it is, they can produce something. It is better for somebody to produce something than to be idle. I, I get the point. It is better for a fertile land that is sitting there growing weed to be put to productive but you is use. the land fertile? That's the question. I'm the asking. land, is, if it's not fertile, you may have to apply irrigation. You may have to apply fertilizers. You may have to apply certain inputs to make it fertile. And but the land is there. Is it available? Now, we can talk about land reform and all of that. But I think the point that you, you, you must allow me to make is that for Ghana, the 91,000 square miles of land that we have, that we are sitting on, we should be able to use it for something. The 24 million people who inhabit this land, we should be able to create opportunities that will employ them and make them productive. Stage one, okay? Now, then you move away as you, as you do well. Now, people are fed properly. The prices of food are down. We are, can export some to Nigeria, some to Togo, some to the United States. We are making foreign exchange revenue. We can use that money now to your stage two, to buy machinery and get into manufacturing. Understand? When you start the manufacturing, now there has to be export discipline. You look at the South Korean economy. Uh, let, let, hold on. I'll come to the, you're moving to the second stage. Let's come back to the other stages. So on stage one, mm -hmm. uh, let's do agrarian planting, basic subsistence. Let's try and be able to consume the stuff that we're growing and then be able to sell some. What you will achieve by that is that you cut down the food budget of many Ghanaians because the food budget uh, is buying imported commodities and therefore sometimes expensive. Mm -hmm. What you also do is that you return the $700 million of rice, at least half of it, the business back into the economy. It's and a so, place. And so people have money around because they are selling rice Thank and the you. rice has ready market. Mm -hmm. Fair enough. Okay, now you want to move to stage two. Two questions for you. How long will stage one take to implement? And num number two, stage one might not be able to employ and solve the problem of graduate unemployment, which I know that you are passionate about. Why should not? They, should they be with graduate unemployment? Can no. be solved by stage one? We now, should plant rice. Agriculture requires several inputs. Mm -hmm. And one of the key inputs is enlightened agronomic yeah. knowledge. So you have a situation where you can deploy some of these graduates and, and uh, now, going back to graduate unemployment, you must. I educate. don't want to divert you onto that. Uh, no, no, but, but yeah, you are, because you're introducing it. Mm -hmm. you, must, you must produce the skill sets that will be congruent with the type of production activities you're doing. Mm -hmm. Don't go and start producing zillion lawyers when you're trying to maximize agricultural output. Mm -hmm. So, so that will fit into the policy. You, yes, you okay. must be very clear. Let's say, my, my, my first five-year development plan or seven-year development plan, this is the focus, okay? We are doing maximization of agricultural output. And therefore, the knowledge and the skills that we need to complement this must come to do that and support it. Secondly, government policy must focus on that. Whatever subsidies you need to give the farmers to make it work, whatever knowledge, extension services knowledge, you need to give them to make it work. Whatever policies that will buy the produce from them so they don't go rotten, like we are doing with tomatoes that are perishable. So stage one is a well-conceived strategy to use your abundant resources, which in this case is mass labor and mass land. Mm.
understood. Now. And that will bring that will naturally bring some money. It will ease the pressure on families because um, the food budget will come down mm -hmm. and uh, all the foods that we import. Now, if it's rice, rice is 700 million. If we talk of maize, tomatoes, and everything, we are probably importing about a billion of food that we consume every year. Mm -hmm. Your point is that if we can produce even half of that, mm -hmm. here is 500 million within your economy. It's, it's not going to Syria. It's not going to Lebanon. The, it's not going to Japan. You are creating jobs within your own society. You are not, any that's time you buy point. something mm. important, imported, you are creating a job no, somewhere in somebody's else. country. Mm. Okay. So that's stage one. Yeah. So manufacturing. And, 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 and so, how long would this stage it, one take? Well, it depends upon your development plan. If we start in plan. August, uh, wait, Look, September. If we start September. The Chinese took three years to think about developing a 10-year plan. So, you see, you, 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 we have to be careful that we don't box ourselves in, into impractical pro, uh, uh, schedules. The whole idea is to accept the fact that we have certain resources that must be put to use. Once we all accept that, that the people in the hinterland are human beings who can produce something for themselves and for the nation and to export for the foreign exchange you're talking about, then the policy is programmed to make that happen. If that becomes clear, now the next stage of manufacturing is you can get into a large scale tomato production when the tomato can rot within a week. It means that you must have a tomato processing factory. Mm -hmm. You can have producing pineapples when pineapples have a short shared life. It means that you must have a factory that to transform the pineapple into pineapple juice orange into orange juice. Go to MaxMart and look at the orange juice, I mean the, 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 the juice section. All kinds of juice from South Africa, from, 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 from Saudi Arabia, from all over the world being imported into Ghana. And I don't think there's any nation five degrees above the equator as we are that has the climatic conditions and the soil conditions to do this better. So that's my first point. My, set, my third point is the finance leg of the development strategy. Mm -hmm. Now, a developing nation has limited financial resources. And because it has limited financial resources, these funds must be targeted to become more productive and maximize the use of those resources. Mm -hmm. You can't have a policy saying that for the next five years, Agricultural production is our focus, but the banks are giving loans to real estate. You understand? Mm -hmm. So the, the, the financial and economic resources of the nation must be targeted to the economic policy of the nation at the time that you are using it. So those are the three legs of the development policy. And this is the same policy that was used by these countries that are now the behemoths of economic power. Okay, let me uh, read an email, and I'll come back to you on the questions that I have lined up uh, in terms of interrogating uh, the things that you have already said. Um, this guy says, I have a business that I want to bring into the country. Uh, please, I'd like to have Dr. Amor's number uh, to discuss about that business. Uh, somebody wants to bring business to the country. Uh, another one says that, um, I like today's discussion. It's more productive than pink sheets, than affidavit than evidence in chief and than contempt. Okay, thank you very much. Um, keep your emails coming to goodeveninggana.gmail.com. Uh, please write clearly so that I'll be able to read uh, um, the email. Um, so what are you asking for? Is it a policy? Is it a regulatory framework? What are you asking for? Um, because if asking you're asking for a refocusing mm -hmm. of the nation's leaders in devising and adopting a development strategy that will work for us. The lead, when you say leaders, what now, do you mean? Government and opposition? Well, because only, there's only one president at a time. When we say leaders, not just political leaders, business leaders, whoever, mm -hmm. uh, to, to focus our attention on what we need to do to really bring opportunity to as many Ghanaians as possible. Mm -hmm. That is my focus. And I'm saying that majority of our people, as you and I sit in this room, in Accra, are in the hinterlands of Ghana, and that those people must not be forgotten. If you want to build a VARA economy, we must have a program that brings them into the fold. And looking at what they can do today, it is in the agricultural sector. 
and that we must focus on the policy that maximizes the agricultural produce, the variety of things that we can make. Mm -hmm. And then transform ourselves into the next stage, which is manufacturing. Because manufacturing has proven to be the vehicle through which countries get out of poverty. Because you can, once you manufacture something, you are adding value. The value of pineapple is in the pineapple juice. The value of tomato is in the, to in the canned tomato because you preserved it. You can sell it to somebody. It's portable. It's not going to rot. Manufacturing also has economy of scale. When you start manufacturing something, the cost is here. As you manufacture more and more, the cost comes down. Mm -hmm. And this is why all these countries are done manufacturing because so, it is so a way of So what kind of, of policy can kickstart this thing? I mean, if you had the decision, you are not the decision maker, obviously, but if you were the decision maker, mm -hmm. what kind of policy can kickstart this thing? And can it be done at the, at the decentralized level, the DC level, the uh, municipal level? What, take, take a... Uh, uh, any any hinterland village, say uh, uh, Bekwai or or Bikum in the Brahma region, or Damongo in in the northern region, what must happen? Well, what must happen must start from the centre, because in Ghana today, the centre controls the resources of the nation, and therefore. When you say centre, what do you mean, Kumase? The, no, the centre is the political centre. Ah, the centre of power. Yes, the centre. The flagstaff house. The centre of power, where the nation's resources come and then it's dispersed to do various things. And so if the center says that, we think that this policy of maximizing agricultural output, mm -hmm. decentralizing the investment of the nation's resources, and making sure that in the regions we have activities that absorb this idea of maximizing agricultural produce. You understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I have called for a one billion development fund. Yes. We have I 10 regions. That. Let's say we are not even taking population into consideration. So one billion dollars is 200 million per region. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, a 200 million dollar fund. One billion is not, it's 100. It's a hundred million. Yes, sorry, 100, yeah, yeah. hundred, a hundred, a hundred, one billion dollars in ten regions would be hundred million. Hundred million dollars. Yes, each region. Each region. Yeah. For instance, mm -hmm. so if say stage one, we are going to use this money to maximize ag agricultural output. Then the money will be available. If you're going to do agriculture, oh, there's a lot of things that will happen. There should be tools and equipment to clear the land. There should be seeds, high yielding seeds. No, first you must get the land. You talked about the land policy, which is another. But matter. yeah, we'll come back to that yeah. because I don't want all yeah, yeah, this. I understand, but first yes. you must get the land. Yeah, the land is the land uh, suitable? Is it available? Is it cost effective? Is it, you know, we have all, all of that. Of that. Yeah. But just focus on the gist of what I'm trying to say. Mm. So the land is there. Mm -hmm. You have the land. You have the, the the machinery or the implements and the tools that will be used to clear the land. Cutlasses, holes, tractors, they are there. You need the seeds. To do agriculture, you need water. It could be rain-fed. It, it could be irrigation. It could be borehole. Depend upon the circumstances. You need people who are qualified to give advice, to tell the farmers this is how you plant, this is how you space it, this is how long you, you, for you to harvest it. You need uh, people who understand packaging, labeling, storage. Then you need the distribution network to market it so that the final usefulness of the product is obtained. You understand? Mm -hmm. Now, this money that I'm talking about will be the money that will finance all this chain of activities. And mm -hmm. if it is productive and efficient, then you see that you will begin to experience the same thing that these countries I'm talking about experience. Year one, 75% improvement in yield in China. It was like the next 45, and it keeps going in and growing. That, and growing. That's very interesting, so, because two things that immediately come to mind. I mean, I, I recently interviewed the Minister of Finance on this program, and he was um, excited about the one billion um, euro bond that he has achieved from mm -hmm. Uh, the the private capital market. Mm -hmm. uh, he's hoping to go and raise some more money. Uh, 
Do you think that instead of applying the money to what he had applied the money for now, he said to me that he was applying the money first of all to retire part of the earlier euro bond mm -hmm. and also to uh, pay domestic debt so that the cost of borrowing for our country generally goes down. Mm -hmm. When that cost of borrowing goes down, then he will able to be able to venture to borrow more money to support VRA, to support the gas plant and all of that. Uh, do you think that he should have applied it to this very revolutionary policy of yours? Because you're saying that after one year, two years, three years, perhaps we can pay back. Definitely. Should he have we, done that? Should he have said, okay, 100 million for each region, or we can distribute it some other way, uh, depending on population and land size. But each region get a certain amount of money. That will immediately put maybe 50,000 people of, of our young people to work immediately. That will probably grow some important uh, IT companies that are doing labeling. Mm -hmm. That will immediately grow X, Y, Z. Mm -hmm. That will immediately secure uh, some of the 700 million rice mm -hmm. importation. Mm -hmm. Do you think he should have done that? Would well, it have been I, wise I, I, for him to I do don't do second guess, you know, his policy. But, but if, if I were doing it. But you, you are talking uh, 1 billion. He had 1 billion. But yes. He applied but I'll, I'll use my 1 billion to do what I'm describing. You won't retire the old euro bond no, wait, look, and reduce the cost of borrowing. The, 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 the most dangerous thing for a nation to do is go and borrow for consumption. There have been so many examples in Southeast Asia, Malaysia, Thailand, Philippines. You're talking about the go, 1997 Yeah, go ahead, crisis. the crisis and all of that. Go and borrow money and use it for consumption. The, the day of reckoning will come and your economy will collapse. Now, all these borrowings that we are doing, if we are using the money for practical investment, investing in things that is obviously going to make a return, then go ahead and borrow because the return will be more than able to, to pay it back. Now, I'm talking about putting Ghanaian citizens to work. We've got to, be, we've got to understand the deep philosophical connection between economic progress and development and relating it to the people. Mm. You are trying to improve the livelihood of the people. And improving the livelihood of the people, they must be the agent of their own transformation. Do you understand what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And therefore, if you empower a rural farmer with a piece of land, and you give him all the inputs, and he sees that through his own work, he's producing this. Now he's making money. Now he can buy a piece of cloth. He can educate his people. You are transforming your society. And by transforming the individuals, you are scaling up for a better future, a stronger economy, and a better citizenry, because now they have confidence in themselves. And you say we've now, done if it you before go, with cocoa. The way, the way we are doing these things is like the people are over here, and we, the leaders, we are just doing, let's do one road here. Let's do, we are not bringing the people into action. You must involve the people to transform themselves and to transform their life. You have a cocoa marketing board company that buys cocoa. Are you going to have a rice marketing board that buys rice? Whatever we have to do, yes, of course. Because, you see, if, if the sophistication of your, your rural farmers is not at a level where they can really take it from planting to harvesting to marketing, then you must segregate the, the steps. Like, like, like we did with cocoa. Let him plant. He and plants. And let the marketing company go and buy it. The marketing company comes here. Storage facilities. They have the sophistication to go to Europe or wherever to see uh, the international market and the prices and all of that. And I'm saying that Ghana must wake up. So the farmer because says, I have one bag of rice. He knows that it will be bought. Exactly. Where, where you, are buying it as soon as, you are buying it as soon as he brings it. Hmm. When my father finishes cocoa and put it in the sack, we take it there, boom, take your money. You what happened? You don't care. What yeah, happened? exactly. Mm -hmm. The society has thought through the whole process. So that you, the farmer, goes. you are doing this part. What did your father do with the money? My father uh, invested the money in bigger farms. Mm -hmm. Okay, he educated us. Mm -hmm. um, he built houses. Married my woman. Yes, he was a polygamist, a very happy man. We'll, we'll take a break at this stage and then we will uh, we'll continue with that. But before then, uh, Mr. Patrick Gaveji says that, um, uh, so Paul, what is the nation doing about assets like this? It's sad that we leave them and they die with their brains because of politics. Will you die with your brains because of politics? No, I'm not dead yet, so. yeah. Are you an asset? He says you're an asset. I, 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 don't, I don't go up in the morning and say I'm an asset, but I believe that I have something to offer. I work hard. I read the history of different nations. I read the history of my country. 
I told you I'm passionate and I cry in, in what, why are we blessed so much? And yet we cannot adopt simple policies that will get us there. Everyone when we come back from the break, I'll ask you as you talk about blessing, uh, other matters, gold, uh, we do have some gold. Uh, diamond, bauxite, uh, uh, oil. If not, what do we do about all of that? Uh, should we leave them and just focus on this uh, piece of matter? Or well, what should we do with the other resources? But I hope we can get deeper into manufacturing. But, uh, uh, yes, we have protectionism. 20 minutes. We have 20 you know, minutes more, so you need to sort of... Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah protectionism is important, okay, WTO. You know, uh, I mean, that's very important. And then yeah. the finance angle. Mm, finance, yeah. You're so, so using your nation's... Box all that in 20 minutes. You, you studied in California, you should be able to do that. 20 minutes all right. after the break. Thank you very much and uh, we have 20 minutes to go on a very important matter uh, yes doc so you don't want me to come to the oil yet let's go to manufacturing if you're ready yes mm -hmm. i mean the, the the manufacturing angle mm -hmm. of the development leg is very important in the sense that this is where you are creating the value chain you are taking raw materials and adding values to them that's the whole process of manufacturing. Mm -hmm. Manu, facto, doing with the hand. Manu, facto, you know, that's the. So, in, in our case, if, if we are going to really utilize our land and labor resources, then the common sense next step is that these produce from the land must be given higher values by transforming them through manufacturing into higher value products for ourselves and also for export. But how do you do this? In essence, where do the money come from for either the state or the private sector to buy the equipment and machinery to start? And this is where the financial power of the state comes in. So at this you stage, you've done the, the basic one, and people are happy. People are on the farm. Yes. They are producing. Yes. We are eating the produce. There's some money in the system. So that's sorted. So you're moving to the next stage. You have stopped the rural urban drift. Yeah. Our young able body coming to stand by the roadside and all of you. But have you taken roads to the rural areas? You do what? You have to. Before this one or during or after? At the same time. Okay. As I part mean, of you, the you policy. Must, you, uh, when we're, one billion, when we're doing, one when billion we're doing, is not yeah, going for one roads. Billion is like when we're doing so you cocoa. go for another one billion to do roads? No, when we're doing cocoa, yeah, uh, roads had to be built yeah, to, the cocoa, roads yeah, to the cocoa producing areas. Yes, he did. Yeah. When the colonialists came, they, they built railway lines to yes. where our minerals are. Yeah. From there to the harbor to ship them out. Yes. Okay. Mm. They knew what to do. Do we know what to do for ourselves? Mm, that learning. is my point. Mm. We must come home with our mind and look at what is inside Ghana. What, forget, let's say we woke up tomorrow and there was no nation on earth, only Ghana. What will we do to produce civilization for ourselves? How would we walk in shoes? What clothes would we wear? What food would we eat? Well, but thankfully there are nations, so let's no, look at no, how No, 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 but you see the mentality. Mm -hmm. when, when we start talking about protection, protection of your bodies, to protect your infant industry. Because if you're going to do manufacturing, it means that some new companies are going to spring up. Yeah. They are now starting, so learning by doing. They are now grouping. And if you quickly open your borders, because you say somebody called the WTO says I must open my borders, you don't have a chance. But your if you don't do that, WTO will bring sanctions on your country. What sanctions? Let me focus on this because I, but that's I don't want this. That's yes, an important it's, matter. It's, the it's, WTO matter. Every nation that has developed has protected its interior economy. Alexander, Ham Alexander Hamilton, the yes. first treasurer of the United States, mm -hmm. is the father of protectionism. He's known as the father. They protected their internal economy from outside coming in there. The United Kingdom protected its economy. Inside, people could not export wool. They started with wool. 
they put a high tariff if you wanted to export it because they wanted you to use the wool inside the United Kingdom and transform it into textile for making clothes. They put barriers of made clothes coming in. You cannot import clothes like this into the United Kingdom. It has to be made there. They use their Royal Navy to protect the sea lanes of their colonies so other countries cannot come and sell things to their colonies. So to say the Gold Coast. Yes. Only you they understand? can sell to Gold Coast. Yeah. This is how they started. Now, when Germany came in, Germany saw that, look, these things, <laughs> I have to be smart. And, oh, I, I also forgot. The United Kingdom and the U.S. had laws preventing the exportation of their key machinery. They invented it. Don't give it to somebody else to come and compete with us. They had laws protecting their high-skilled people from going to work for another country. The knowledge you have belongs to this country. You cannot go and share it with anybody else. And they did that and gradually, gradually grew and grew to a point where now they can compete. Now, you and I are starting to build a new nation. We've been colonized over 100 years, independent for 50. We are still grouping, grouping, grouping. And the reason why we are still grouping is that we have not learned the history and the practices that these so-called rich countries today use to get to where they are. And they are, they are telling us that, don't do what I did to get to where I am. There's a new book, The Bad Samaritans. Oh, I have seen right? You've seen that book. Yeah. Now you sent me one, didn't you? Yes. Yeah. Now, the point I'm making is, in, yeah, we will trade with anybody. We will trade effectively because there are also some progressive people in some of these countries. President Clinton is one of those. He came out with Agoa, knowing the, Im the impact of what barriers and tariffs can do. He said, let's help Africa. 3,000 items, you can bring them in here free, tax-free, so that by doing this over 10 years, you also start manufacturing things and learning by doing and learning by doing and become efficient, and then you can compete. So we should thank him for that. Yes. But the, the, the important thing that I'm saying is this. The Poultry Association of Ghana mm -hmm. has been trying to lobby government over the years to tell them that stop these Brazilian chickens coming in here. The imported okay? poultry. In, the imported poultry coming in here. Give us a chance to learn how to do this business. You understand? Nigeria is smart. They have adopted that. Nigeria will not allow any chicken to come into their country yes, from anywhere. Obasa and Jordan there. It has to be. Some done. of our poultry farmers no. have gone there. So I'm saying this to our political leaders, and I mean this sincerely. But, how, but you, said, you said in, your, in, in, the, in the email that you sent me that you have advised a couple of African leaders, and you know the difficult choices. Mm -hmm. Now, this is one of the very difficult choices, and I know a bit about the poultry uh, matter. Mm -hmm. When Yao Safuma was finance minister, they tried mm -hmm. to do it. Mm -hmm. The WTO said no. The, the, the WTO laws, you can exempt yourself, you know. You see, to your own detriment, you lose the loan that's the, coming the, from the, the, Finland. Okay, where the point the, is. The loan that's coming from Finland, you don't get it anymore. That's why some countries in their development phase did not try to get loans from anywhere. They use the internal. You and I have had this. We have all the money we need to develop Ghana's economy. If you like, call me back here and I'll show you how. The 24 million people in this country have enough currencies floating around within our system that if we had a strategy to get these monies into the financial institutions, we would have enough money to finance our development. Look at all the buildings around you. Mm -hmm. Okay? A house serves two purposes a shelter over your head and a social investment. Mm -hmm. You have houses worth $500,000, but you cannot borrow and take money out of that to reinvest. This is how the United States, the UK, the Germans, this is how they finance their forward development. So we need to start thinking out of the box, looking around the world for something that's already here. You, you have mean, the if look at all the homes that is Ligon. Yes. They are all equity. They are all equity. They, they, you know, no, so they, they just built it from their own pockets. They are, they, they are, most homes in Ghana are paid for. Paid for, yes. Totally paid for. So if the house is worth 100000 and you put 100000 
and you put one, one what a, 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 a thousand homes together, eh? mm -hmm. that is uh, one a thousand million, one yeah. billion, right there, one billion right there. That you can release, okay? Because all he's doing is that because if you don't pay me, I can take your house. Mm -hmm. The money you are giving to him will be used properly, and therefore you're releasing money for financing further development through the initiative of individuals who have the capacity to see opportunities and do that. So I am calling for a national discussion of the state of our economy, the strategies that we need to use to leverage ourselves and get to the next stage, using our land resources, our manpower resources. Yeah? Now, this wholesale opening of our borders of everybody coming here and sell whatever you have for us. And, and, and that is not the way to go. The way to go is identify opportunities that we must protect for ourselves and opportunities that we must JV with others to do. The next point is how do you use the financial resources of the nation to support agricultural development and manufacturing because it's three legs financial resources maximize of the agricultural development mm -hmm. get into manufacturing mm -hmm. protect your infant industries give them subsidies give them soft loans give them tax rebates companies that want to come in here to compete be selective those that will add more value to what we are doing let them come in you know when ibm wanted to go to japan this is when Japan was riding high. The Japanese government told IBM, my friend, you want to come in here and do business, you will license your technology to local people at 5% royalty. This is unheard of. They usually charge 50, 60% royalty. But you want to come in here, 5% royalty. Plus, we are all even going to tell you the volume that you can sell every year. IBM was desirous to enter the jam. They acquiesced, they gave in, and they went in there. Do you understand? So if we want companies to come in here, because there are certain te technologies that we don't have that we need, but we must be very smart and negotiate properly so that the impact of their coming is positive for our future development, but not negative. Because if that company comes in here and with their muscle, of high level technology and know how, it kills your infant industry. Then who is going to expand and build the companies to employ your people? Your graduates who are coming from your universities and your young people who are looking for something to do. So the point is that I am proposing that we focus on this three leg development strategy of maximizing our agricultural output by utilizing the land, the mass fertile land that we have, and the abundant labor resources that we have, supported by government subsidy of hybrid seeds and equipment that we need, and then the discipline of exports, exporting the rest to get a foreign exchange that we don't need. I'm also calling for an aggressive creation of companies, manufacturing companies, that to use the output from these farms and process them to get the high values for ourselves and for export. And my final leg is the financial intermediation strategy where government policy must focus the resources of the financial institutions to support these two legs of our development. If we don't do that, our development will continue to be haphazard. We will see successes here and as we are succeeding here, we take our eyes off of here, and we are always going around in circles. Now, mining, you say you talked about mining. Yes. For me, we should look at these things as added bonus. Unless we wake up one morning and Ghana has more oil resources than Saudi Arabia, then it's a game changer. As it is today, we must look at our oil resources as an additive to our financial muscle to do what we have to do. But any development strategy that does not call for the inclusion and participation of the majority of the citizens is not going to transform our society. 
we must get Ghanaian individuals participating in their own transformation by transforming the individuals to do something for themselves and gain income will be transforming our society. So what is the most important thing that must happen? The most important thing is that we must adopt industrial policy, state planning. That is the key. For a developing economy... More like a that, that socialist. It is not socialist, my friend. You see, this is where we get sidetracked. Yeah, but you have to be clear. Is it socialist or is not? No. You say state having, planning. Having, state don't, plan? don't you have a plan in your home? Yes, you have I have a do. plan. Yeah. Thank you. Hmm? As a nation, you must have a plan. Okay. And so I'm saying it. National plan. And what I'm, well, yes. National development plan what and commission. I, what, what, I'm, what I'm proposing to the nation today is sort of a plan. You know Mr. P.V. Obey? I know him very well. He's, yeah. my, he's my schoolmate. Okay. He has National Development Planning Commission. Is that what you're talking about? No, I'm not talking about, uh, uh, with all due respect, you know, I'm not talking about uh, a, a system that is in some room. Some room. I'm talking about a program that is discussed, debated, understood by the whole country that this is the direction we are going. Our leaders must hold our imagination and tell us that based on what we have and the position of Ghana in the world today, this is the direction that we should Give me go. some time to read the, the emails. There's too many, and uh, if I don't read it, then uh, people will not be happy. Uh, Paul, ask Dr. Amor why, exports, uh, why ex he exports cocoa beans instead of adding value to it right here in Ghana. Is he waiting on the government alone to do that or when he becomes president? He doesn't actually export. We're talking about his father. Uh, the cocoa <laughs> farmer. So uh, Augustine says, I appreciate this topic that much and want more of this than the political noise that you make every day. I'm seriously interested in the farming project. I completed Gimpa with a BSc accountant and now in, I'm into farming. I tell you I'm loving it. I would like to meet Dr. Amwa for more advice because I am ready. Okay. Um, Another one uh, says that some people have sent their emails five times. Uh, bravo, Paul. You are obviously on point by inviting the gentleman to describe some cure for the economic problems of our country um, of inverse relations where ambulances are used to cut the dead instead of the hairs, blah, 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 etc., etc. Uh, he says Ghana must start thinking and stop serving the interests of other nations. Um, Ernest says that, good evening. Uh, please ask Dr. Kofi Amoa where where are his workers that are working for him? Um, I don't where? know what he means. He says, <laughs> the, your workers that are working for you, he says, where are they? Mm. They are in their houses. <laughs> nice idea, but perception of Ghanaians has to change. Government financing the project 100% will not work out in Ghana because of our working attitude in public service. We can set up a reg regional companies and have private public partnerships where by government contributes be part of the financing. I think he disagrees with your government setting up the one billion fund. He says people don't work for government. Please ask Dr. Amwa, uh, he's saying it again, where are his workers? This is coming from Ernest Edison Smith. Do you know him? No, I don't know him. Uh, he says your workers. Uh, I'm serious about the business I earlier texted. It's a glass factory that I have secured to be manufactured in Ghana. Uh, if not his number, at least his email. Uh, he wants your email to talk about his glass factory. The problem is people like Dr. Kofi Amwa will not be contacted because our leaders are stuck. Uh, look at how Saudi Arabia used public diplomacy, Al Jazeera, to transform their economy. We have the brains here in Ghana, but we are just not ready to use them. Uh, the discussion is great, but my question is how does such wonderful ideas reach our leaders for consideration and possible implementation? Um, our economic statistics indicate that there are more farmers than white-collar professionals in Ghana. The reason Agric has failed is not as a result of few people involved in agricultural production, as Dr. Amor observed, but the irrigation challenges, absence of modern agri. Now, this is interesting. He says that the statistics shows there are more farmers than any other profession. So they are there, but the reason why they are failing is not... It's not because of the reasons that you are giving, but they are not getting support. No irrigation. No, I, don't give, I didn't give any reason why farmers. No, you said people should get in. Everybody. No, should no, get in. I said they're already there. Okay, so he says they are more actually. They are more than than other of people. Of course, majority of Ghanaians uh, are farmers. Please ask Doctor how he will describe productivity in Ghana. Uh, we said uh, about that already. How, Mr. Uh, Host, how can we develop as a nation if people are telling us that fowls had flew to Burkina? for food and we accept as a nation. Uh, money meant for development are being kept in one man's pocket. Uh, well, he's talking about uh, uh, 
uh, something else. Okay, uh, Solomon probably will be our last email. Uh, I have an orange farm, yet getting market is a big problem. Doc, uh, we have to leave it here. We have to do this again. Uh, our time is up. Yeah, I know, I know. We have to do it again. Thank you very much. hours. Yes, for your triangle. Uh, it's a pleasure but, coming to us. Uh, yeah. No, so you are rolling already. We are. The <laughs> producer's name is on now. His, his name is the last one that comes. Well, thank and you for inviting me. We talk yeah. again. Yeah, cheers. Good night. Bye.